What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the shop. I am in desperate need for some shelves in my home office area. I have the spot right above my computer monitor that I think would be perfect to have a shelving system. I just have all these things that have sentimental value to me and I need a way to display them. Like this statue of Harley Quinn and this wooden Nintendo game and this genuine piece of kryptonite. And I think I have a few of my kids photos somewhere. So here's what I'm thinking. I wanna have a couple shelves and I wanna do something a little bit funky. Instead of just having a bracket under the shelves, I wanna have the bracket wrap around the shelf. Something different that I've never made before. So I'm gonna start with those brackets. I'm gonna break down some lumber and let's get this project started. I cut all the pieces for my brackets, and this is what I'm envisioning. These will be the rails that go up against the wall that will hold the brackets. I'm gonna have two of those, and then I'm gonna have two shelves. So I need two brackets per shelf. This is what I'm planning on doing for the brackets. So you're gonna have one bracket on the bottom of the shelf, and then one bracket on the top of the shelf, and the shelf's gonna go in between them. And then the ends will be mitered, and I'll have my little piece here that will get mitered and then put into place. The bracket's a little bit thick and that's okay. I'm gonna have this flow into the rail. So a lot of this is gonna get cut away right now. It's about two inches. I'm really gonna cut it down to more like an inch and a quarter. And that's gonna give me plenty of room for it to flare out and then flare down onto my rails. So the next step is joinery. I'm gonna take all these bracket pieces. I need to connect them in here. I'm gonna use dominoes because it's the fastest way that I can do it. You could also use dowels if you wanted to, or you could have left these long and then traditional mortise and tenon joints. All that works. I'm gonna do dominoes. And then once I get those where I want them, then I can work on mitering the ends and getting all these pieces to fit together. And then we can do a dry assembly, see how it looks. All my pieces fit together nicely. And if you notice, the mortises are all off-centered in each one of them. And that's because the section that has the wider side, that's the part that's gonna get cut away. So I'm gonna go over to the bandsaw. We're gonna cut away that wider side and then cut a gradual slope up to the corner. And that's the part that whenever it connects to the bracket that connects to the wall, all of this should flow nicely and it'll give it a really nice look. To make sure that all my brackets are the same shape, I took a piece of particle board and made the shape that I want. And then I can use double-sided tape, stick it to each piece, then go over to the router table and use a flush trim bit to trim it all to size. Now I know all my pieces are exactly the same. This is what I've got. Now these, all these are dry fitted in there, so they're not glued in place. But you can see they swoop up into this back bracket. Now the next step is I wanna miter the ends I can miter my little pieces so these all fit into place. And I'm gonna reinforce those miters. So the good thing about that is right now, the shelf would sit right here inside the slot, which means all the weight is on this bottom bracket. That's holding everything. But by mitering these, reinforcing those miters, now the weight is being distributed across the whole bracket system. It's gonna hold a lot more weight.
I let my shelves dry overnight and then I did a little bit of sanding just on the surface to make sure that I got rid of any of that dry glue. So now it's time to work on the shelves. Now the other day I did pick out some walnut that I really liked and went ahead and rough milled that down. I didn't go down the final size because one, I wanted it to acclimate to the shop a bit and two, I didn't know exactly how thick I wanted it. I wanted to make these brackets first, then I can determine the thickness of my shelf that will slide into the slots of the brackets. Now that the brackets are complete, I'm gonna go ahead and finish milling up those shelves, cut them down to their final size, and get them so they slide inside our bracket. The shelves look great. The brackets slide on them nicely, and I made sure that the shelf boards are slightly narrower than the slot openings for my brackets. That way I've got a little bit of extra room for expansion and contraction. Now that the shelves are done, I can focus my attention back on the brackets. And there's a couple things that I wanna do. First, I wanna put keyhole slots in the back. I'm gonna put two in each bracket. That's what's gonna hold it onto the wall. I also wanna do a significant round over over the whole thing. I don't want it squared at all. I want everything to be super soft, almost pillowy. So all these surfaces are gonna get rounded over and all those things are gonna happen over at the router table. After some sculpting and sanding, the brackets are done and I really like how they look. They have a really soft look, but they also have a soft feel. And I think it's gonna look really cool with that shelf that goes in it because the shelf has all these straight lines. It's gonna be a good contrast. Now there's a couple things I did. On the back, I put two keyhole slots to hold it in place on the wall. And then also I put in a hole on the bottom of each shelf bracket for a screw. I went back and forth on what I wanted to do to connect the shelf to the bracket. And I thought, keep it simple. Just do a simple screw in the middle so the shelf doesn't wiggle around because I do take things apart and move things around and reorganize. And I wanna have that flexibility. Before I apply finish, I was wondering how much weight would those brackets really hold? Now, I'm not gonna store anything heavy on this. It's not gonna have dumbbells put on it. It's gonna have decorative stuff. But I'm just curious, how strong would they hold? I happen to have this. This is the prototype that I made. It is built exactly the same as the ones I end up doing. Same thickness, same length and width. So uh, let's test it out. 25 pounds. I heard some creaking. 45 pounds. We'll see. I see no cracks, no stress fractures anywhere so far. I'm gonna keep throwing five pound increments on it. We're gonna see what happens. Everything's still hanging just from the bottom. I didn't wrap it all the way around and it's in the middle of the bracket. That's where my screw's gonna be. That's the center of the shelf. We're about to try 80 pounds. Just as a reminder, I have no metal fasteners in this. These ends here are mitered and they only have four millimeter dominoes inside them. I figured that's where it would break off first. I haven't seen it yet. We're about to hit three digits. It's more than I thought. I was thinking 70 pounds. So where's it gonna break at? Is it gonna break in the miters? Where the bracket touches the back bracket? Or will the actual keyhole fail? We're at 125. I'm impressed. I had to bust out the cart. It was gonna look too heavy to try to pick up with one arm. I 
think it's gonna break out of the wall first. This looks a little wobbly where it's against the wall. Everything else looks super strong though. It wasn't wobbly before we started. Three 45 pound plates. <laughs> we finally did it. And as I expected, it broke at the keyhole slot. That's insane. Ah! These miter joints are still intact. There's not a single crack in any of these miters. I understand that we're dealing with thousands of pounds per force that this glue could hold, but that's in an ideal setting, face grain to face grain. That's not ingrain to ingrain. That's unbelievable. We know that our shelves are plenty strong, so now it's time to apply finish. And I'm gonna use Rubio Monocoat. It's not something that I use very often, but I think it's gonna look killer on this walnut. But my mind can't get no rest. No, no. I've been down so long. But my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, dog. This walnut looks amazing. So I'm gonna let this cure and then we are going to assemble the whole thing on the wall. And fortunately, the sponsor of today's video is gonna help us out. From the company that brought you Circle, prepare to be amazed by the revolutionary new product, Template. Struggle with hanging things on walls? Did you seem to somehow forget how to use basic tools as a plot device to justify buying completely useless things? then it sounds like you need Template. Designed using space age technology, Template will change how you hang shelves. Template is fully customizable and can be tailored to your exact project needs. No more searching for where the hook is located. Forget having to guess where to put that screw hole. Template will completely change the way that you hang shelves or your money back. So next time you reach for your shelves and you reach for your tools, reach for Template. The shelves were a breeze to hang up, especially using that template. And after they were up, I have to say, these greatly exceeded my expectations. This isn't a style of furniture that I typically make, but now that I see it, now the hamster's on the wheel thinking about other things I can make that will complement it. So hopefully this video provided you a little bit of inspiration for your own projects. And if you liked it, please hit the subscribe button and like this video. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.